Okay, good afternoon with everybody. Professor Antonio Carlos Supo from Universidad de Campinas, Brazil. Hello. And Professor Basiliki Budomitis from um, Federal Institute of um, Sao Paulo, right? Caraguatuba. And a student, PhD student or doctoral student, Marcus Galvetti. Uh, and I am uh, Professor Victor Pons from um, San Diego State University. <coughs> And we are going to, in this uh, meeting, or for about 30 minutes to an hour, I am going to express my comments in regards to the paper that was presented to me, which is entitled Evaluation of CN Estimation Methods and Initial Abstraction Rates for the Rainfall Runoff Representation. Okay, first, as I, as I said earlier, uh, there's a couple of words in here that, uh, or language uh, issues that are very minor because I think the paper is 99.5%, okay? But in uh, the page, uh, pages are not numbered. So I'm having, a, I'm gonna have a hard time. But in, in the introduction in the third page and the fourth paragraph, it says, according to Hawkins, bear with me, this is not gonna take too long. This is the, the minor stuff. According to Hawkins, the current number is based on the combination of the LULC antecedent runoff condition in hydrologic soil groups, hydrologic soil groups, reflecting the runoff potentiality. The word potentiality, it's unusual in English. I think it should be runoff potential. But you check it. You check and make a decision. I'm just make, giving you comments, okay? Do you follow, Marcus? Okay. okay. Did you find it? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that's one. Uh, I should also mention at this point, while we're at it, that ARC, antecedent runoff condition, is a term that was created about 20 years ago to replace AMC. The original name was AMC. And yes. I, since I grew up with this method before they changed it, I believe they changed it in the mid-90s. I'm used to saying AMC. But people have said, as well as you have said, ARC. So the thing to do is to check the last version of the manual. And as you probably know, the last version of the manual is called 680. Did you know that, Marcus? Yes, I did. I, I, I have here on my yeah, computer. The manual 680. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when the web shows up, and I'm sorry, Antonio, for my lesson of history, but I have no other way to retrieve myself from this one. I happen to know the history. Okay. We, we, appreciate, history. we <laughs> appreciate it. You know, Zufo loves history. Anyway, yeah. yeah, so I love history too. So at the beginning, it was called AMC by the originators of the method in 1954, antecedent moisture condition. It, and uh, it, um, it bears repeating that, that they, they consider that the fourth issue of variability and they bundled everything in there so the antecedent moisture condition condition is supposed to be the fourth one the fourth factor in importance but yet in terms of volume it may be the larger one because it has the most most effect okay so then in the middle 90s they changed the word for, for arc because somebody out there thought that it was not an issue of moisture that they were talking about but runoff so they say, why don't we just change this ARC to M M AMC to ARC? And in doing so, that they, they basically threw a monkey wrench on all of us old people that are used to saying AMC. AMC. So every time I have to mention this, I'm going to go like, um, should I say ARC or should I say AMC? As, as, as if there was a difference. And I do not believe that there is a difference. It's just a semantic difference. Okay, It's just what they wanted to call it the second time they reviewed this, which was in the middle 90s. Okay. Sir, do you think we should explain uh, one paragraph about this change? Ooh, you can, of course. It's This is light that Marcus is talking light in here, meaning loose, right? So okay. for other people that come later, those that read the paper, they should know because the new mm -hmm. guys, the younger guys don't know. Okay, you know, so maybe guys, like after previously, after the word previously, we could start a paragraph and, and have a little bit of the history from, yeah, you know, okay, explaining yeah, about the change. change. From AM, AMC to ARC. 
And I believe that uh, if, if, that only if the 680 is mentioning ARC, I am not sure. Yes, yes, it, it is. Okay, then it should be AMC to ARC, okay? If you read my book, and Licky can mm -hmm. tell you my book, my book, there was no ARC because they did that yeah. after I published my book. You see? So, and, and as far as I recall, when I redid my book on the web, I kind of refused to, you know, people have their own ways of thinking. Refused to change it because I figured it was not necessary. You know, they should not have messed with it, but they did. Okay? So you can make a comment, a historical comment. It would be important. It would be, I think it would be, it will add to the paper. Okay. Yeah. Once uh, I read an explanation uh, about it, sir. What? And it was, once I read an explanation about it, and it was saying that they, one of the reasons that they wanted to change is because it gave the impression that we were talking about infiltration and uh, it's not it should not be about infiltration it should be about runoff that is like looking at a face on both sides and saying which face do you like better <laughs> it's the same thing i mean if it if, if it infiltrates it doesn't run off and if it run off doesn't infiltrate so, yeah I honestly don't necessarily agree with the change, but who am I to say that? What what Marcus should 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 do is go with the manual, the current issue of the manual, because I already told you that they're trying to change the manual to put in their Lambda 0.05. It, yes. Whether they have done it or not. Okay, I'm going to tell you something I didn't tell you the other day, that about a year ago, they created a committee to move on this, and the committee is still working. And then <laughs> I made a mistake. I'm joking. I'm a joker. I made a mistake of calling Hawkins at about the time when they were putting together the committee. And Hawkins says, Pons, I want you to be in the committee because you're the history of the method. I said, well, really? I mean, because he wanted me to be. And it is true. Many things that I know because I pursued Marcus, you know, and I pursued Woodward and all these people that were long retired and many dead. And, and I'm old enough. My students say, how did Professor Don no, Pons know so much? And the answer is, because I've been around. I've been doing this for 50 years. And I'm not a, you know, I'm a spring chicken. I, I'm, I should have been retired 10 years ago. When, I, when you are 66 is when people start retiring. And I have compared, I don't want to get into that. Compare most people that are 66 and they have less energy than I have at 74. But it's because I'm Peruvian, you know, I originated in the highlands. And in the time, you get a lot of nutrients, good stuff in there into your DNA. That's what it is. Anyway, that's not a run of curve number theory. Okay, so the potentiality is one thing. Now, if you move on to the next page, before you get into the second, before you get into the second uh, materials and methods, right before, in the paragraph before, it says, we discuss about the proposed performance measure indexes. Okay. That is very Portuguese and very Spanish, but it's not English. It's we discuss the proposed, the proposed. Eliminate the word about. Where where are you before? Before material methods. Before the section two that says materials and methods. We compare, right? No, before section two. Yeah. Therefore, in this study, we compare. Oh yeah, yeah. And Additionally. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we discuss the proposed performance measure indexes. Okay, let me also say in here something that you, I'm sure you know, but maybe you need it to be put in, in the front of your mind. The literal translations from English to Spanish and Portuguese don't necessarily go. You can say something in English, and then you'll say, oh, yeah, I'm going to change this. I'm going to call uh, Google, Google Translate, and I'm going to change it and leave it there. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to, in order to translate to the end program, in other words, if you're going to be Spanish or Portuguese and you're going to translate or vice versa, you have to know both languages well, because there are cultural differences. There are things that you could say readily in English and you cannot say it in Spanish because it looks stupid. <laughs> Excuse me for saying that, but that is the truth. OK, so you got to be careful as far as the translations. OK, so how would you write that, sir? The, the sentence, I would say, additionally, we discuss the proposed performance measure indexes, not about. 
Yes, you discussed discuss about, but that's in Spanish, like I said. Okay, so we discussed the proposed, all right. Exactly, the, the proposed, no, no about, okay. about a little awkward in there. When I say mm -hmm. awkward, I say, I mean, it's not, I don't mean it's bad. It's just not good. <laughs> if, it doesn't know. sound good, I know. Exactly, it's not 100% good. It's not bad, people are going to, people, when they read it, they're going to say, oh, yeah, okay, this guy doesn't know English, but I really know. Well, he's from Brazil, oh, that figures. That's what they're going to say. I mean, even though they're not going to, uh, they're not going to explicitly say that, that's the truth. So if you're going to write a paper in English, you must be sure or try the best, your best, that the, um, that the English is correct from their standpoint, not from your standpoint. We don't, we don't make the English language. The English language is there already made. Okay, so those are the, the two or three that I have. Let me just go back in here. Okay, so, yeah, where the, the, the rest of the good, uh, the things are good. I mean, I'm telling you that this is a good job because two papers out of a, two errors out of a 15 paper is good. It's very good. You did an excellent job, Marcus. Now, yeah, uh, I'm going, um, uh, now I'm going to make a comment on form. Okay, on figure one, if you look at figure one, can you look at figure one? Yeah. Yes. It's very confusing. <clears throat> Very confusing. Um, uh, I would recommend. I mean, I know anything can be done now in with software with graphical software. The way I usually do it is I use uh, back, uh, I use Excel. But you are you using something else, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What are you using? Flowchart. It's a it's an like it's a tool that is oh. available online. Oh, oh, I see. Is that a, a graphical tool? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not using it's free. Excel. You're not, so you're against uh, Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I bought your idea. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I, but you got to improve on Bill Gates, not get it worse. <laughs> anyway, this is confusing. To me, it's confusing. I had a hard time with this figure. For one thing, you have four colors in here but they are not very different. <laughs> so I, I don't know where the, where the blue and the green is, if it is green and blue. At any rate, I, I think you'll have a hard time selling this figure to, ah. your, re to your readers. Just you one need... second, sir. Are you talking about figure one or figure two? Figure one. I have figure one under my eyes here. Now, let me look at figure two. No, because figure one is only black and white. No, no, what do you mean? Figure one relationship between observed and simulated runoff came for is como back and white it's i see red i see i see green huh? i see blue and i see yellow which by the way are the four colors that that you should be using red green and blue and yellow those are the four colors however Just a second. i i cannot find it then because my figure one here is the methodological approach of the study Ah, okay, excuse me, excuse me, it happens, yeah, okay, so then your next figure, your next figure is called figure four, figure two, figure four, let me see, let me just order here, figure two, location, figure three, nice, okay, figure four, Figure four is coming over here, which is not. Ah, figure okay. Four figure is not, four is the observed precipitation and yeah. discharge events. Okay, that is good in terms of the points. Um, however, um, and this is just a comment that I'm going to make. Uh, your your axis is too light. I can't see it. I cannot see the axis. Uh, the figure is lost on the page. So I suggest that you enclose in a box. That's, mm -hmm. That would be my suggestion. That's the way I would do it. Enclose in a box because you don't have a box in here. And if you do, I can't see it. So that's figure four. Then you go further, further in here, and I guess you you go to figure one. So that means your the numbering is wrong. The next figure after figure four is figure one. Licky? Just on second, sir. 
Hmm? Figure four, okay. Yeah. And then okay. Five. And then it's figure, oh, I see, because it's written figure four here. Yeah. Then All right. One, figure... And then you have a figure two. So what happened was that you added those two figures at the end and forgot to uh, renumber them. Uh, it's, yeah, it's figure four and figure five. Figure four is, let me see your curves. Then there's no, figure, figure three, which is the, the, the one that should be seven. And that is the end of it. So you have figure, figure. Yeah, one, two figure figures four. Yeah, what? two figure four. Yeah. The yeah. one that you were talking about is relationship between observed and simulated runoffs, right? Yes, yes. That should be figure five. Yeah, this should be figure four. Yeah, correct. And then the, the next one should be figure six and the last one should be figure seven. Okay. And again, my recommendation here is one of, of presentation. Uh, like I said, if I were doing it, I would I would put a full box in there made with Excel. But if you don't like Excel because either you don't have it or you have some problem with Excel, uh, you can do this. But but no, uh, it was it. This was done by, with Excel, sir. Oh, this See, we like Bill Excel? Gates. We 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 kind of like Bill Gates now. You cannot <laughs> like Bill Gates. Well, I mean, I just read his, his, his biography. It's on the web, not on the web, on Wikipedia. As a matter of fact, I just read it yesterday. Uh, Reread it. I'm sure that I read it over the years. Um, uh, I do believe when people do this, they indicate, they indicate by colors and by symbols, like a cross, like a little triangle, or like a little round. And you have all of them all of them of the same size, but different color. So if you are like our friend Bill Gates, you are colorblind. So you couldn't see the stuff. He's colorblind, by the way. He's really known that he's colorblind. So you couldn't see it. So I'm gonna suggest that you make some changes here for presentation only. My suggestion. I mean, you can leave it there if you want to, but I mean, you know, it's gonna be better if, if you did it the way I say. Uh, and in the figure six is this kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing. Okay. Okay. And figure seven. Figure seven. Okay. Figure, figure seven is fine, I guess. But again, there's no access. There is no access. That, yeah, we have I'm to use the access. I'm sorry. Not access. Box. I'm used to the box. Mm -hmm. I can't get away from the box. I've been doing this for 20 years. So, so take that with a grain of salt, meaning you don't really have to change it if you don't want to, okay? So yeah. that's basically it as far as the figures are concerned. Um, okay, okay, then you have a, a, a list of references, which is a very extensive list of references, which is good, which is good. Okay. 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 In the references, I'm I'm picking on you on, on on your forum because that's what I usually do. That's what I usually do with the students. Uh, in the list of references, everything looks good. The only thing I'm saying in here is that when we list the references, we usually do not spell the names of the authors. Yeah. Like, uh, like in this case, for instance, in mine. <laughs> We said Hans <laughs> Victor M and Richard H Hawkins. Now the way uh, the the how can I say the style that we follow in ASCE and a lot of people follow mm -hmm. because there's several there's two or three styles even in English. Let yeah, yeah, English. but you're Let correct, say, sir. We 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 had talked about it, and uh, he's, he's correcting that. Mm -hmm. You have to say Pons V M and R H Hawkins. Yeah. The people are not interested in knowing that I am Victor and that Hawkins is Richard. That's unnecessary. I mean, this, that's a preference. These references were, uh, were automatically generated by Mendeley. By who? Mendeley. Mendeley software. A public and free version of Indulge. Oh, well, you're using all kinds of software out there. Well, yeah, but okay. the no, thing I, is that I, they, 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 there is this kind of thing. It is good, but also we have to check later because some of the reference 
are abbreviated with the first and middle names abbreviated and the others are uh, complete. So we have to adapt that. But yeah, because yeah, you we have wanted- to, you have yeah. to, Okay, this is okay. what you gotta do. You gotta ask the people that you're gonna submit because people are very picky about this. Yeah. Other people say, hey, why are you so picky about something that is not necessary? But they wanna have, keep a format. So you ask yeah. the people that you're gonna submit, what is their style? They say, mm -hmm. whatever the style is, you know, there's three styles. Uh, one of them is Oxford, the other one is da da da. When they tell you the, st the style is this, then you go out there and check every yeah. every reference of those 60, 70 references. You're going to work over an hour there, but you get, it's mm -hmm. your good purpose. I think, I think there is style. You cannot argue later on that you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's as far as the references are concerned. Other than that, um, the stuff is, is, is good in terms of the quantity of it. Okay, so now we get to the to the meat, to the important stuff. Okay, so uh -oh. I'm going to say uh, obviously I didn't do uh, I didn't check your calculations. That's not my job. Okay, because that would take too long. I probably spent a couple of hours looking at this uh, and while I was sick. Even <laughs> that was a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Um, but what I'm going to say is a, first a philosophical thing. Okay, and I hope. What I say uh, is well received, okay? Uh, first of a philosophical thing, Marcus was told by his superiors, you come up with an infiltration formula for agricultural use. And Marcus gathered his team, that was in the four, late 40s and early 50s, and they developed the method. They said, we're gonna develop the, the curve the cur method. Okay, and he assumed that it's a critical uh, value. He assumed a thousand inches, I believe. It was the maximum infiltration that you could have because he had experience, you know, and he said a thousand inches is a lot uh, because and he said quite correctly that after a thousand inches, rock arises and he wasn't doing rock and he was not concerned with the rock anyway because uh, agriculture is not concerned with the rock, right? So right. it was not a thousand; it was nine hundred and ninety. Why? Because he, in his in his wisdom, he wanted to change the total storage into a more manageable number that people would relate to. Because the total storage, which I'm telling you, is nine hundred and ninety. It's between zero and nine hundred and ninety. Was a was a a, a value that most people could not relate to. So he did that. He did a transformation. It's a, it used to be called, um, when, I, when I was a young man at school, we, we used to study something that was called conformal mapping. I don't know you guys, I think you guys are too young because they dropped it from the curriculum. But it means it's a mapping. You map one place to the other. It's like change of variable, right? And so he changed the S to a CN, and he called it CN, curve number. So everybody got used to the CN. So the CN varies between zero, no, I'm sorry, between one and 100. One is for 990 inches, and 100 is for zero inches. Right, exactly. And there was an equation in there, which was written, I believe, in inches, right? And then we had to change it, as you have done in your paper, change it to millimeters or to centimeters. Because the, the term, the, the um, the method has been interpreted in Spanish, meaning in metric system, which is fine. And I have those equations in my book, by the way, and I know you have seen this already. Okay, so, so Marcus um, decided to do that, that uh, change of variable, and then everybody got used to the curve number. So usually the curve numbers, as defined by Marcus, don't get below 45, because to get it below 45, it will be so much abstraction that you'll never have a flood. <laughs> and since we are, and since we're all talking about floods, because we're going to do this because we want to figure out what the flood's going to do. So basically, 45 is about the lower limit. Maybe if you haven't mentioned, you should mention that. Uh, I think this is in my book. Or, no, in the paper. It's in the paper. Between 45 and 98, people don't want to get all the way to 100, but they could really. I mean, if it's a matter of a of a um, concrete, concrete, you know, it could be a hundred, but 98 is- Or even good. water, right, sir? What? Or even water. What? Oh, 
water. If you if you find water, for example, well, yeah, it will be a class... hundred, of course, of course. Yeah. In that case, it will be a hundred. So those After are eight the ranges. Soils. Yeah, those are the ranges. Now, then the question is, once you take the soils out of it, the soils, and in the soil, they decided they were going to go with four sections, which is, is fine because, like I said, the method is conceptual. Then the number two is the the land use. That was important for them because they were charged with doing agricultural hydrology, not anything else. However, what happened, and this is history, by the way, Antonio, this is history. What happened was that after the uh, SES developed their method, the Forest Service got jealous. And the Forest mm -hmm. Service also wanted to develop their own method because all of these agencies over here compete with each other like you would not believe. Oh, I, I, there's books written on the subject. So the Forest Service got jealous and they tried to do something similar, but they realized that, that it was too much work. Okay, they weren't serious about it. So they decided to adopt and modify the curve number. It says adopted and modified. But the, there was a problem in there. And the problem was that, and this is philosophical and it's historical, huh? I, 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 I must know this stuff. I mean, uh, people say that I know it and I must know it. What happened was that, that there is runoff is direct and indirect. Okay, but there's a confusion because when the runoff hits the ground and it moves into the nearby river, when it gets to the nearby river, at that point there's confusion because it runs off the river and it joins with the base flow and it's still runoff. So at that point, is that runoff direct or indirect? And the truth of the matter is that by the time the runoff from the surface got to the, got to the river, it lost its, its, its characteristic of being direct. It joined, it joined together with the indirect runoff, which comes from the subsurface. Okay? So then the question was, what was SCS supposed to do? Were they supposed to develop direct or indirect runoff? And the answer is direct runoff. That's what they charged them with. The, the, the basins that they were using were very small. They were in the acres category, 100 acres, etc. Very seldom they got to more than square miles, 640 acres. And according to Marcus, he told me that the largest basin that they ever tested was 10 square miles. And that even, it's an exaggeration, I would say. And the reason why I would say it's an exaggeration, because these guys were in the upland, because their charge was to hold on to the soil in the upland. And this upland's everywhere, by the way. We talk about the upland as if we were up, no. The uplands are everywhere because when you have a watershed, okay, and has any shape whatsoever, right? Uh, we like, like to pretend that the watersheds are oval, but they're not oval. In many places, they're this and that. I mean, there's a watershed that I happen to look at. I believe, I believe it was in the state of Santa Catarina. I'm not sure if it was, no, no, it was not Itajai. It was some other, actually don't remember at this point. It's been 40 years, but it was a watershed that, it was like 10 times wider as it was long. 10 times wider as it was long. So that's a different story altogether in terms of the unit hydrograph, right? So um, so that's the, the story. That's the story. Okay, so let me go back in here. So when, when uh, the Soil Conservation Service did their method and published it, it was immediately acclaimed because they had a good reputation. So the Forest Service tried to copy it. They couldn't do it. Then they, what they did was adopt it and modify it a little bit, modify the curve numbers. But at that point, there's a problem. And the problem is that the forests have are larger areas and have base flow. You see? While the upland agricultural watersheds don't have base flow. So basically, the runoff curve number method should be properly called direct runoff curve number. However, because these guys were not dealing at all with indirect, they felt safe to say, well, I know it's direct only, but I'm just going to call it runoff. And they, they led to the confusion in that way. 
Had they called it what it was, the regular unaccord number, there would have been no confusion. But later on, the Forest Service came up, and they started to they started to calculate a little bit of indirect runoff, right? And yet it was not considered in the method. The original methodology is not considered considered the indirect runoff. Now, as you know, in indirect runoff, it depends where you are. I mean, if you are on the coast of Peru, it's little, very little. It depends on where the, the surface, the groundwater is in relation to the bottom of the river, right? You guys know this. Uh, you go to the Amazon, half of the Amazon may well be indirect. I'm saying just off the, off the bat. And why do I say that? Because when the, the, Amazon, the Amazon peaks twice a year, as I understand. Yeah. The and canopy peaks, factor. Mm -hmm. huh? Canopy factor because of interceptation, right? No, no. The Amazon peaks twice a year. And when it goes up, and then it comes down, and it goes up, and then it comes down. So it has a wave on top of the bottom. And the bottom is the what's well, coming out from the ground. Because if it were not coming out from the ground, it would be a wave. You see what I'm saying? The only way to create a wave is to go out on the surface. But then the wave encounters the big mass and it becomes like the Amazon or like the Paraguay or many of the large Brazilian rivers. There's many out there. Okay, so that is the story. Then later on, they had success. The reason why they had success was because it was simple. There is a thing called in English the KISS principle. I'm no, I don't know if you guys know this. Uh, Liki, do you know? No. The KISS principle. It this method abided or adhered to the KISS principle. The KISS principle is like this. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> yeah. Meaning I'm gonna it was so simple that all the stupid guys could pick it up. And it became popular. And I, I know you guys, you're professors, you know what I'm talking about. There's a bunch, a lot of stupid guys out there, unfortunately. But that's nature. <laughs> that's nature. So they all liked it. They loved it. And, and it became popular and everybody wanted to use it. So in the, I believe it was 85, 85, yeah, 85, they applied it to the urban situation. Urban situation. Uh, TR-55. They applied it to the urban situation. Yeah. TR-55, mm -hmm. 85, 90. Uh, then, then the, uh, oh, there was missing, there's a missing, a guy missing in there. So we covered agriculture, forest, urban. Who's missing? Range. Foresta. Um, what can I say? Um, it's not foresta. Range is, is los pastos. Okay? And the people from the pastos, range hydrology, they didn't know what to do. Who handles range hydrology in the United States? There is no such a thing as range hydrology per se, like there is soil conservation service. There's no range conservation service. So uh, at that point, if anybody's going to claim the propriety, it was the BLM. Because the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, controls or manages half of the Western United, I mean, the entire Western United States is managed by the BLM. So they also got into the thing and they published the tables of curve, curve numbers and so on for the range application. But again, the range is kind of in the middle between the forest and the soil. They still have some uh, water that goes underground. Okay? So then the, the question to this whole thing is, does it work? Does the method strictly developed for agricultural small watersheds applicable to range, which is a little larger, or forest, which is much larger, or urban, which could be anything. You could be anything in urban, right? And the answer is strictly no. But in the practice, yes. <laughs> That's right. the answer. Strictly I have should a... be applied. But in practice, yes. Why? Because the people that use the method can abuse it. Oh, yeah. The people can ab and they have abused it. So, so what has happened is that in, in the last 30 years, people have growth of hydrology, right? And people want to do simulations and so forth. And so for the, for the, um, for the event, it was easy because you already had a tool. But for the yield hydrology, it's not easy. The tool should not be strictly uh, applied, but yet it is applied. Yet it, I said that in, in my paper. Yeah, but wait a second. In my paper, I said that it, it is applied to the yield hydrology. 
But those people that do that are basically on their own because it's not warranted, not, not guaranteed by the originating agency. Okay, yeah, Liki, you have a question. Yes, I was just taking a look at your book here, you know, uh, the hydrology book, uh -huh. chapter five. And then there are some figures that could be interesting maybe uh, to use also in this paper about the composite CN as a function of impervious area, percent impervious area. Okay, you know that those stuff, pictures? Okay, that's, excuse me for interrupting, but you can continue later. That stuff yeah. was produced by them for the TR-55. Yeah. Specifically for urban. Specifically for urban, TR-55. Okay. Now, when I wrote my book, I wrote my book in 1989, and by TR-55 was created in 85, so I, I already knew about TR-55. Not only did I know about 55, I was friends with Woodward and with Thur and with other people that were working out there at Bellsville in Maryland. So you know how it is, amigos, and so I decided to promote their methods in my book. <laughs> These are my friends. I'm going to promote their methods in my book. So I apply. I use the curve number, which I had to, because it is primordial. But I didn't have to do the TR-55. But I did it because they were my friends. They had helped me. I, we, we, we were cozy. We had a couple of drinks, you know. So I added the TR-55. And as a result of that, that Holm is saying, oh, Pons is giving us a good treatment in his book. And it was like that. I'm confessing to you that it was because I was friends with the guys that were managing this stuff. So I said, I'm going to, what do I lose? Nothing. I don't think anybody has criticized me for introducing TR-55 into the book. After all, TR-55 is a simplification. It's something quick. We put it on a computer anyway. We soft, The software. The software can put it on a computer. We have a soft computer program that calculates TR-55. You don't have to go into those graphs that, that uh, Licky was mentioning. Anything, anything can be put into a into a computer, and we have those calculators. So that's the story of TR-55. But let's go back to the issue, which is an important issue, of, of the modeling. So if you're going to do event, it's fine, as long as you get a good CN for the event. But the event is a postulate. It's not a realization. You're assuming that this is going to happen. You're going to have a rainfall. You're going to have abstraction, you're going to have a runoff, you're going to use that runoff to create the unit hydrograph, right? And in the unit hydrograph, you're going to make a mistake, right? Because you don't know, and not everybody knows about the unit hydrograph. So at the end, the answer is, is clouded, because you could have made a mistake in the curve number, and you could have made a mistake in the unit hydrograph, okay? And if the basin is big, and we have done a lot of big models, like three, 4,000 square miles, okay? Uh, uh, let me mention that later on. You also have to contend with the fact that by the time you use a topology, meaning like, um, like a skeleton of the river, of the, of the stream basin, then you're gonna have to route. Eventually you have to route, okay? Route meaning in the channel. And there's also an error in routing in the channel. So if you use this with a, for a large basin, like say 5,000, I don't know what size, the base, your basin example here is. What's the size of this one? Mm -hmm. Of this Mineriño? Uh, what is the size, oh, the, area? No. the area? Almost the six kilometers. 106 kilometers. Square, no, six square kilometers. Yeah, it's very it's small. So small. So, so well, that's not the, well. that is not the, uh, the the commentary then does not apply to this. We're talking here when you get to larger basins, 500, 1,000. When I worked on the Pantanal in the year 1989, no, 79, the basin was... Paraguay River. The Paraguay River, yeah, Upper Paraguay, the Upper Paraguay. The basin was 500,000 square, 500, square kilometers. The entire state of Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sul. Okay, 500,000 square kilometers. Now you may ask at this point the question, this is an interesting question. I'm sorry if I'm being long-winded here, but I usually am long-winded. You may ask why, what, what method were they going to use? And they, they made this decision in the year 1975, more or less. And they chose the SAR method to do the modeling. Why? 
because the SAR method was specifically designed for large basins. So they weren't going to do for small basin, right? So they used the SAR method. Are you familiar with the SAR method, Marcus? You have to read my book in chapter 13 of the old version. We haven't, in the new version, we haven't done 13 yet. But anyway, Google it, S-S-A-R-R, -R, SAR, and you'll get it, SAR method. So they used the SAR method in Brazil because they knew that it had been used around the world for large basins because the SAR method was developed in Colombia. In the Columbia now region. you are using MGB. Huh? Model, uh, Modelo para Grandes Bacias, MGB. Or SWOT model. Oh, now, but not at that time. <laughs> they changed. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, now, of course, they changed. But at that time, it was the SAR. Yeah, for sure. I can tell you that because, because uh, that led to for me to study the SAR and I ended up discovering a few things. At any rate, we're going on the Ramas. So let me say that there's an issue of propriety or applicability with scale, but you don't worry about it because it's not your problem. So then the next question is, is how to determine the curve number? That's important, okay? So the curve number is, has to be understood that, that it has three levels. It has level one, level two, and level three. And level two is the normal, the normal. And people around the world use it with level, level two most of the time, but they can also go to level 1.5 or one or 2.5 or, or three. And when you go to level three, you produce more rain. More, I'm sorry, more runoff. And if there's a whole lot of, um, I'm sorry, if if the runoff is not a whole lot, it makes a heck of a lot of influence. I mean, you can go from 82 to 85 and the runoff doubles easily, you see? So you need to be, be con uh, careful or concerned that a design mode has to determine the ARC in a design mode. You can't just say this is the curve number. People are not going to believe you. I'm going to say, oh, really? Huh? You think you're guessing or what? Because the actual curve number may depend on your assumption of ARC. If that is not talked about it, it's wrong. If people don't talk, if people talk about the curve number as if it were only one curve number, they're wrong. What? Mine. Who's talking? Sorry, sir. It's my daughter here. <laughs> Okay, so, that's a, so there really is one central curve number, but there's a whole bunch of associated cloud around the cloud curve numbers. So when you're going to design, you have to choose first the antecedent moisture condition. Okay? So then the next issue is... So can I go on, Bas Eliki? Yes, sir. Can I go on? So when you design, you got to consider the first, where are you going to design? One, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. Okay? Okay, so that's for design. Okay? So so you have to be careful, and I think you should mention in your paper that, uh, that, that that's the fact. Okay? And then the next subject, which is, I think, the most important subject in your case, is you want to determine the two curve number, AMC, ARC2 curve number, because that's, I believe, what you're striving for. You want to determine the curve number. So you can say to the designers, this is the curve number. The designer, if, if, if he really knows the stuff, he's going to say, that's number two, right? And you say, yes, it's number two. Then they can do whatever they want. They can change it to one, or they can change it to three if they want to, or they can keep it. They can say, Marcus gave us this two, and we're going to run with it, OK? But or they can also say, he gave us the two, the number two, ARC2, and therefore I'm going to believe that it's not that, but a little higher or a little lower, depending on the situation. Okay? So so that that is the bemol. You have you use that word in Portuguese? Bemol? The bemol, like in the music. The bemol is the change, the little change in the curve number. Liki, you know that word? Bemol? Maybe not Portuguese. No. Spanish, I believe in English too. Maybe How do you spell it? Huh? Let's do that. How do you spell it? What? How do you spell, spell it? I hope I'm not 
spending a whole lot of your time discussing unnecessary. No, we're almost at the end now. We're almost, let me just get in here for a second. The more How do you spell it, sir? Wait a second. A demo. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> in Spanish is bemol and in Portuguese is plano. Plano. No. Piano, I think. No, I know. Piano. It doesn't matter. It is a musical term that people use for saying a slight variation. Okay, un bemol, mm -hmm. a slight variation. At any rate, the, uh, there's a slight variation, sometimes it's not even slight, into the selection of the curve number for a specific design purpose. So now we go to the last, which is the, the last part of your work. Your work is mostly, as I understand it, for the purpose of finding that number by doing some uh, mathematical calculation. And you use three or four methods which have been recognized. And we should say at this time that these methods lead to different answers. <laughs> have you proven that? Yeah. Yeah, they lead yeah. to different answers. So which is the method to use? I would say that the method in the, in the manual should be given the priority because that's the method in the manual. Don't forget that you're not inventing this stuff. You're understanding it so that you can use it to the best of your ability. So since you did not invent, you should not be in the business of changing it or inventing it. Unless, unless, this is an unless here, that you're an official part of hydrology in Brazil and they charge you with making a modification specific for Brazil. In that case, you can make anything you want. I took an American method and changed it a little bit because I know that this is the way it works in Brazil. That's what the Indians did in the 90s. Oh, they changed 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. And they told me that's the way they were going to do it. In this region, we're going to change it to 0.3 because we know that it doesn't work for 0.2. You can do the same in Brazil if you wanted to. But I surmise that it's not going to happen because uh, I don't know the wherewithal of the Indians, but to change uh, a method that is established by the American practice is hard. It's not impossible, but it is hard. So let's get out of that discussion. So at this point, you are going to try the various methods. And I think as you as you have shown to yourself, they give different answers, right? But that's not the most important part because technically uh, they should give different answers because they are different fits. And you know what a fit is. A fit is a fit. I think it should fit this way. But some other guy comes in mathematically, I think it should fit that way. There's least squares, there, there's... Anyway, so I'm not going to discuss that because at that point, I don't think I should, too detailed. But I'm telling you off the bat that the methods are going to give you different answers, somewhat different answers. And it's not your fault. It's the fault of trying to fit a cloud with a, with a line. It's a cloud, right? A cloud of points. And you're trying to fit a line. And every line is going to have its tendencies and it's going to have its accuracies. So don't feel bad about it. It is just the way it's going to be, okay? When, um, when uh, I asked Hawking many years ago, 20 years ago, I said, Pete, give me some data because I have students that want to try this. And I was really, I mean, good. I said, you know, we got to try it. And Hawkins sent me some data, data from the original method, like Waco and, you know, these places, or, you know, the place, Waco, 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 Texas, and so forth. Because it is in that region that uh, originators of the method used it. It was in the Midwest, U.S. Midwest, Texas, and those places like that. And I had some students work on the data, and they were coming out with all sorts of things. It was junk. So I complained to Hawkins. I said, Pete, I mean, uh, there's something wrong with the data. The data you sent me doesn't fit or doesn't, or doesn't look good. And he said, Pons, that's all the data I have. What are you talking about? That's the data we've studied. 
he wasn't going to change it because they gave it to him. They handed it to him. This is the data, the official data. Long story made short, the data don't look good. The likelihood is that they will not look good. Okay? So you need to live with that. But the most serious comment, and this is where I'm going to end it here, and then I'll open it up for you guys. The most serious thing is that you do not know for sure what ARC level is that particular event that you are trying to fit. You really don't know for sure. It could have been that, that they had the, the, the five-day precipitation in, in the NEH4 manual. They said, and I'm trying to, I, I can pull it out from my book if you want me to, from my old book, which is on the web. But he said something like this. You use ARC2 if there's no rain, but if there's rain, a certain amount of rain, you use ARC3. And if there's not a whole lot of rain, you use ARC2. They, they had some criteria for determining whether the, the chosen value is going to be ARC1, 2, or 3. That's the first part of the story. The second part of the story is that they realized in the 1990s that that thing didn't work. So they went back and deleted the table. Deleted the table. That table that I'm referring to, you know, deleted. So if you look at my book, because I'm trying to follow what these guys are doing. In my first version, I had the table. And in the second version, which is online, I think I deleted the table. I wasn't going to fight with them. If you don't want the table there, we take it out. So basically, from giving you weak advice, they ended up with no advice. There is no advice as to how to, how to get the R2. R I'm sorry, I'm opening up your eyes, but that's a fact. Okay, so, so they ended up with no advice. So right now, it is a matter of experience. Once you calculate the AMC, no, you have a cloud of data. And from the cloud of data, you fit the AMC2. That is true. You're fitting the AMC2. So what you're calculating is the AMC2, but that's a fit to the data. And from there, you can work on it. You, uh, the, because the fit, the, those like the least square and all the, in these methods, they they draw a line and half of the points are up and half of the points are down. It's kind of in the middle, so that that would have to be construed as being a a, a central fit AR, ARC two. So I think in your paper, you should mention that that it is um, it is the ARC two that you're calculating based on the fit. As far as the fit is not very, doesn't look good, that's that's what happens. Okay? That's the way it is. As some people, they're very common not to say, that's the way it is. Like like Trump used to say, we're the COVID, and that's the way it is. It's, I used to remember, he used to say that. Anyway, so they can, it cannot be fixed at this point. Okay? But one last thing I'm going to say, and I'm, I am at this point uh, forgetting, um, so uh, so that's the issue with the ARC. Oh, oh, okay. So now let's examine why is there the variability, okay? So you have soils, land, land use, uh, hydrologic condition, and ARC, which is, uh, which is a surrogate for the, all the other types of variabilities. Now, what are the other types of variabilities? I believe the leading type should be the lack of entire coverage. It didn't cover the whole area. There's no reason why the rain should fall in the entire watershed. We are assuming that only for design purposes. Okay? The second one would be the effect of intensity. Because we never talked about intensity. We talked about depth. And why did we talk about depth? Because these guys, working what they were doing in 1940s and 50s, they didn't have the benefit of intensity. There was no pluviographs. All the data they had was daily, daily rainfall and daily runoff. That's all the data they had. They had a choice of not developing any method because we don't have any da good data. Sorry, no. They were told, you develop the method. So they took the daily data, which means that if you have an inch of rainfall, it means it's spread in 24 hours because they were using daily data, right? So the intensity was implicit in the way they put together the data, meaning for 24 hours duration, which gives you an intensity. 
10, uh, two inches in, in 24 hours, it gives you two over 24, one over 12 inch per hour, okay? So that was the effect, the original effect of the intensity. But there's other things in there. <laughs> it's fascinating, isn't it? It's really a long story. So first we had the lack of spatial distribution, the intensity, because the intensity must have some kind of effect. But there is also another thing, which is the vegetal, vegetal macro pores. Oh yeah. The, I remember I told you yesterday or the day before that uh, they would clean up the area in order to measure the infiltration. And I said, you shouldn't clean the area because you got the macro pores. And many times the, the infiltration is through the macro pores. People have measured this, by the way. And it could be substantial, very substantial, could not be forgotten. So the macro pores are not considered. Another thing that is not considered is the chemical pro processes, like crusting. Not considered either, because this is supposed to be strictly a physical. So infiltration is physical, chemical, and biological. And our method is strictly physical, but it does consider land use. It does consider land use, because you have this type of land uses, particularly in regards to agriculture because that's what they were focused on. There's 10 types of land use agriculture. So they didn't really need to get into, into um, the other three, the range, forest, and urban. With the agriculture, they had enough. So it does considered land use. And land use could, be an, could have an effect on, um, on the infiltration. Likewise, the hydrologic soil, uh, hydrologic uh, condition, the hydrologic soil condition, which is also in terms of land use which you can go to my book and many other references, it's all spelled out in there. So basically, in summary, this method is a conceptual method because it is a concept. It's based on a volume, which is good for a concept. It's a volume, right? It's not supposed to describe the infiltration rate other than the, the rate over 24 hours, okay? Um, and those are, those are basically the, the limitations of the method. So now why do we use it so much? It's used everywhere because I'm telling you it's a simple method. They hit it right. They are so simple that they had two variables as you say in your report. I have the curve number and the lambda, but the lambda they dropped it because Marcus was told by his superiors. I believe Marcus told me this. He says, you know what? Our field people are stupid. We're, on a, we're gonna give them only one parameter. They can handle one parameter. So get rid of the second parameter. No, that I don't think, no, sir, I'm the boss. You get rid of it. And therefore they got rid of the second parameter and they put 0.2 in there. To the protest of Marcus who said it was, it was not 0.2. No, it's okay, you know, they did it. They draw a line, which is local relation and so forth, okay? They did not know at the time when they did this, which is in the 1950s, that, that uh, our friend Hawkins was gonna come in 30 years later and do an extensive analysis of the data. He loves to do that, by the way. That's all, I don't mean to say bad things, but that's really Hawkins's forte. And I believe it's his, his only forte, meaning he's done 30 papers on this subject. I believe, yeah, you, you go to the literature, Hawkins, 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 30 papers. So he is really the person that has analyzed most the stuff. And he told me, he said, Ponce, it's 0.05. Everything I've done points to 0.05. And he is trying to convince those guys to change it. Whether they'll change it, it it's in the process. They may, change, they may change it eventually, I don't know. Okay? So that's where, where we, this is where I, I kind of finished my, my talk here because that's what I wanted to say. So, so there are differences in the methods. You should keep in mind that what you're doing is a calculation of two, not three, not one. And that's basically it. And your work was very exhaustive. And I think there's a very good chance if you clean up the graphs, the graphs is what I don't like because your graphs are not like mine. And obviously I like mine, okay? So Chewe Vasiliki, she's an expert on all kinds of graphs, okay? So that's it, that's it, I'm done. Okay. Uh, sir, I have to confess something. Uh, I was following the history, but I don't really know what specifically in some parts we could include or exclude, in your opinion. 
because yeah. I could see that, for example, when you were talking about the direct and indirect effects, blah, blah, of this year, do you believe that we should improve the text in that part if or? You, okay, if you're going to talk about the history, you could do it in two ways. You could just add a paragraph here and there of the history, which is going to detract because the reviewers are going to say, this guy is trying to apantallar, meaning show off on something that is not related. I am a technical guy. I don't want the history. Okay. But the other way to do it is to write a section at the beginning that says historical background. If you did that, they will take it because they have no way of opposing, officially opposing the historical background. Because mm -hmm. everybody knows that if you don't know the history, you don't know the background. Right? So you can add in there a short, maybe half a page or a page of historical background. After, like after the introduction, but yeah, before? After, right after the intro, right. Right after the but, intro, like half a page or a page. If you want, mm -hmm. I can help you with that. You can write it up and I can help you, okay? Yeah. I am, I, I don't want to talk about myself, but uh, Mark, uh, Marcus no, Hawking said that I should form part of that committee because he, he said to me, he says, you're the only one that knows the historical background. And I said, because I lived long enough to ask everybody around. I was also mm -hmm. a very good friend of Fred Thur, who was the critic of their own agency. He, was, he used to work with the Soul Conservation Service. So we had long chats where we went to school, when we went to school, and after, for 40 years, 50 years, with Fred Thur. Fred Thur was employ an employee of the Soul Conservation Service, and he passed away last year November of November of the year oh. 2019 and there's an interesting interesting story about this which I am going to share with you because you should know when he retired around 1985 he called me up and he said Miguel I'm retiring I said cool Fred nice don't forget Fred and I went to school together to PhD school back in the middle 70s and he says you know, I have a plan. I am going to finish Marcus's work. <laughs> I knew you were what he was talking. He said, really? He said, yeah, yeah, he says, because the Marcus formula, meaning that R formula, cannot and should not be applied to the yield condition, meaning a year, because it, is, it, it was not designed to do that. And I have zeroed on a way to do it. I've had a lot of experience with this. I believe I am going to do this work to create the, the second curve number for the yield condition. And I, at that point, I didn't want to say, hey, don't do it and so forth, but, but I could not help myself. I said, Fred, at your age? I said like that, at your age? And he says, yeah, I don't see any problem. Yeah, we're going to do it. I'm going to do it. That was 1985 or so. And he passed away in 1989. No, no, 1985, no. 2014 was when he retired. Something about five, six years ago. Or even earlier, by the way. He retired at least 10 years. He told me he was going to do it, and I believe he did it. Because he couldn't do it. And let me tell you why. Because you guys, you should know, Marcus. I don't know, Vasiliki already knows, and Antonio. That your best work, if you're going to produce best work, it has to be when you're young. It has to be when you're 30. Look at, look at all the big contributors. Look at all the big contributors. When they were 28, they were at the peak of their physical and mental energy. And this guy was 70 years old. What is he going to do? No way. <laughs> and I was right. He didn't do it. Okay. <laughs> so it remains for people to pick up the second. And they haven't done it yet. Why they haven't done it? Because SES is not concerned with the yield. They're concerned. Their job is to do the event. So who should be concerned with the yield? Some agency out there could pick it up, but I don't know whether, whether they're gonna do it. And I'm not advising any of those guys, but the point is that the yield remains to be determined. That doesn't stop people from using it for the yield. But one thing I know for sure is that the yield curve number is not the same as the event curve number. The event curve number is for five days, 10 days. The yield curve number is for the whole year, okay? The only time, and I'm going to say this seriously, 
where the event curve number could be the yield is for the upper pair y. The upper pair y has one hydrograph. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you're, you're from the, from, uh, Marcus is from Mato Grosso do Sul, the upper pair y. It's one hydrograph. It goes up and peaks in May, June, and it bottoms out in December. November, December sometimes even gets to the beginning of January. So it's one sinusoid, which has every year has a different peak depending on whether the year was dry or was wet, right? So if you have one sinusoid, the event is the yield, right? And therefore, the Paraguay could be fine. That is my ex uh, uh, analysis of the whole thing. But, but uh, Amazon has two peaks. And the rest of the world of the rivers, I mean, there could be some in Asia, but I don't know. I'm not familiar with it. But only if the hydrograph has one peak, one annual peak, could you say they are the same. But otherwise, in the normal situation where you have your little water, watersheds of your kind, the Minerino, you cannot use one for the other. Okay? Um, I also have, as background info, a paper which I wrote in 1995, which talks about the yield. That's talks, talks about how to do the yield. You can follow the same procedure, but do it for the yield, and you will get a different number, which is what we did. Okay, that's basically it. What else? Oh, we already exceeded our time, by the way. Any other question? No, oh, Marcus, sir, I was going to tell. I'm just gonna tell you something. So we'll prepare a little bit of a history background, uh, and then we are going to send you it with the paper, the all the corrections, so that you can check. Yeah. Because we yeah. believe that you could contribute a lot with the history background, and I think it's gonna be, you know, a different touch to the paper. Of course. Yeah. The people that are are going to read it. If you have a section on history, I'm going to like it for sure, because they're going to say yeah. this stuff. Nobody knows this stuff and they should know. Right. So it's going to be okay. positive for Marcus. Because what Marcus wants is to get his paper accepted one way or the yeah. other. Right. So, I mean, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this. So to get us accepted and publish it in a reputable journal so that you can put it on your curriculum and that's the end of it. Forever, you'll be associated with this piece of work. Okay. So let's do that. Marcus, okay, great. Then send it to me and we will cooperate and collaborate until you get it done. And the, the schedule is up to you because I am, I told you, I'm 724, 365. <laughs> the last couple of days I was ill. So I was down to maybe 20%. Okay. Uh, That's it, guys. So great. Should we stop it now? Yeah, please. What am I going to do now? I'm going to stop the recording. So, uh, so thanks for all the stuff and the meeting and so forth. And now I'm going to be cutting the recording. So we'll see you later, guys. We'll be in touch. Sure. Any Please questions? don't forget to share. Yes, don't forget to share the link with us later. Which link? The link of the recording. You're talking to a, a, a television technician here. I mean, <laughs> I know how to do that very well. So okay. I will I will search it, post it, edit it, and then post it. And then I'll send you the link. Okay, great. Maybe it's good. Okay? So now thank you, sir. Again now. Bye bye. I'm gonna bye bye.